our nation remains in turmoil. With less than three months before the 2020 presidential election, our country is more divided than any other time in history. Race, gender, politics, all on the forefront. Our nation's founding principles appear to unravel with each passing day. The NRA is facing dissolution as the city of Portland burns. Biden continues his anti-black bebopping from the confines of his basement as Nancy Pelosi plays puppet master in hopes of keeping Democrats in power. This ahead and more today on the Closet Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Wright. Let's get started. In less than 90 days, our country's citizens will be charged with electing the new leader of the free world. On one side, we have a touted leader of business who, from the onset of his presidency, has erupted our nation into an unforeseen global enterprise. Our country's 45th president has defied the traditional political arenas and stuck his finger into the chest of those who wish to establish socialism among these United States. And on the other side, we have a basement-dwelling Joe Biden, too scared to crawl out of the confines of the Democratic dungeon and too afraid to accept the challenge to lead in a time of crisis, and too busy riding the coattails of former President Obama to truly understand that the role of government is small like his understanding of time, place, and race. Folks, conservatism is under attack. We're sitting at critical mass here. The Democrats have one goal and one purpose only, remove Donald Trump for office. After all, he is one who has refused to bow to the members of the D.C. swamp. He is one who stood up against the liberals of the mainstream media and has taken our country back from the liberal policies of a disastrous eight years of Obama Biden administration. I want to jump right in on Joe Biden, folks. And in case you missed it, earlier this week, in an interview with the National Public Radio, the Democratic frontrunner attempted to draw distinctions between black and Hispanic populations in the U.S. Uh, unlike the African American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. What the heck did he just say? Honestly, we all know by now that we have seen some good quality gaffes out of Joe Biden. Heck, Bidenese language has been around for decades. But folks, yet again, we have a career politician, a former eight-year vice president, and the DNC pick for Prez, again showing his true colors and sentiments against the black race in America. And yet again, Biden gets a pass. On Friday morning, MSNBC and CNN and other cesspools of anti-conservative collaboratives extended another pass to good old Joe. Of course, anytime Joe Biden gets off the teleprompter, there is absolutely nothing he will not say. There's absolutely no limits. But honestly, getting Joe off script is a lot like getting someone drunk. Call it inhibitions, call it honesty, call it whatever you want. You know, the old saying is, if you truly want to know how someone feels, get them drunk. If you want to know how Biden truly thinks about black people, just ask him without a prepared speech. The fact is, folks, Biden doesn't give a rodent's rectum about the black race. And that isn't a racist statement. It is 100% truth that as a U.S. senator, as a vice president, Biden did absolutely nothing for the black community other than serving as the lackey to our nation's first African-American president. Biden's vision for blacks in this country is ensuring that they just drop a vote in the ballot box for him. There's no compassion. There's no empathy. Just a Biden bubbled mark on a ballot, folks. It would appear that black political leaders around the country have noticed Biden's comments and have issued some concerns, particularly among young black voters. Younger black activists and elected officials say this week, Biden's blooper can make it harder for him to get their votes. It would appear that Biden has wooed the the older African-Americans. And after all, it was the old black establishment in South Carolina that helped Biden score his first victory in the 2020 Democratic primaries, which helped propel him into the nomination. Kristen Thomas of the Equal Ground, an Orlando-based group working to boost voter turnout among black voters across Florida, said she hears concern from people in and around her community and voters across the state. And Thomas said in an interview this week, What I'm seeing and what I'm hearing among young black voters is that Joe Biden was not their first choice. 
So folks are not really excited to get their vote out for him this November. And every gaffe makes it harder for Biden to generate that excitement. I want to shift gears for a moment and speak on some other Biden bloopers of the week. Earlier this week, as I sipped my coffee and enjoyed my breakfast, I saw Joe Biden's latest political ad. And some of you may have seen it, but the newest phrase and slogan coming from his camp is build back better. Of course, Biden said the Democrats are attempting to stand before the country and attack Trump on the economy. And his current state is a direct result of the coronavirus that has decimated economies and markets across the globe. And in his new ad, Biden is leeching onto Trump's tried and true stance of America first. And Biden's claimed new economic policy centers around making American manufacturing and innovation so that the future is made in America by all American workers. You know, the ones that he left deprived in a state of utter destitution during his eight years as vice president. Biden claims his Buy American plan includes an injection of $400 billion to invest in power new demand for American products, materials, and services, and $300 billion in research and development, including for electrical vehicle technologies and AI to boost high-value and high-value manufacturing jobs in the country. Since World War II, the campaign calls the plan the largest mobilization of public investments in procurement infrastructure, and research and development. Folks, this is the garbage that absolutely chaps my backside. Under Barack Obama, Joe Biden is solely to blame for the mess that our nation's economy is facing under the coronavirus. Don't get me wrong. Trump has done a fantastic job during his short tenure as president. Still, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot undo eight years of failed, devastating domestic and global economic policy in three and a half years. Under Obama, the North American Free Trade Agreement and allowing China to enter the World Trade Organization decimated manufacturing jobs here in the U.S. And somewhere between 800,000 and 1 million jobs were almost immediately lost. And now we see the damage caused by the Obama-Biden policies. Manufacturing was outsourced to countries like Mexico, India, and China, but more Pharmaceutical companies and medical equipment companies turned to countries that didn't force them to death and tax them to death. These companies, folks, were directly responsible for producing PPE, ventilators, and other COVID-19 related materials to help combat the spread of the virus. Biden, Pelosi, and Schumer want to stand before the American people and blame Trump. No, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Obama and Biden who oversaw the mass exodus of American manufacturing and the loss of jobs in the United States. It wasn't Trump. If you don't think the liberal establishment doesn't have their fangs in old Joe Biden, think again. On Wednesday of this week, Biden campaign's Unity Task Force joined with Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont and issued a 110-page policy, which was a wish list of recommendations for Biden. That's right. Old Bernie Sanders, father of American socialism himself, is now assisting Joe Biden on domestic and global economic policy. And just when you think that Biden alone couldn't get any more dangerous. Folks, Biden is a doat of the Democratic Party. He has been and will continue to be. The party needed a moderate to keep from isolating themselves. But the DNC knows that without the far left in their droves of would-be young voters, Biden doesn't stand a chance. Old Bolshevik Bernie was absolutely killing Biden leading up into the South Carolina primary, only for him to be turned on by the DNC because he looked like an absolute kook on national television. Biden is not the first choice of the party, and he should be considered the last pick of black voters in America. But nonetheless, Biden is the only option ahead of November for Democrats in 2020. But he stands no chance in running this country. Heck, he has helped run our nation into the ground for the last 50 years. But make no mistake, Biden is heading out in the basement under the direct orders of top Democrats, keeping him out of sight, keeping him bottled up, and God help keep him away from unprepared speeches and teleprompters. Biden's political career in eight years of VP was an absolute joke. His legitimacy as the leader of the free world would be even more laughable. But what is not 
is the intentional, behind-the-scenes attempt to dismantle our nation's democracy at the hands of liberal Democrats. As conservatives and independents, we must see the writing on the wall. Democrats, with Joe Biden atop of the ballot, wish to return our nation to desperation and total dependence on government. We cannot, and the Democrats must not be allowed to dupe us again. As always, be well, be mindful, but most of all, be American. I'm your host, Eric Wright, and this has been the Closet Conservative Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast. Please remember to give a five-star review and share our podcast with your friends. The Closet Conservative Podcast is a production of the Liberty Loft. Copyright, the Liberty Loft, 2020. You can find more shows and information on our website, www.thelibertyloft.com, or any of our social media channels.